WADA TV gives you a first look at North Central Washington's business news. You'll hear from our local business, tech, and education companies as Jenny discusses hot topics and current events with some of the best innovators and pioneers in North Central Washington. Hello, North Central Washington. I'm Jenny Rojanasatian, and you're watching Guada TV right here on the NCW Life Channel. On each episode of Guada TV, I interview different guests to talk about entrepreneurship, STEM education, or technology. Today's episode is special because we're going to highlight two of our active board members. As a 501c3, our nonprofit relies on the volunteer time, contrib contributions, and support of volunteers in our community. And it's a real pleasure for me to bring two of our board members on air and let them share with you a little bit about their companies, what they do, and why they're passionate about Guada. We'll be right back after this commercial break with our first guest, Walter Thorne. Welcome back to Guada TV. We are featuring two different guests on today's episode. I'd like to introduce you to our first, Walter Thorne, venture partner with Proda Ventures. Yes. Yes, lots of ventures in yes, there. Yes, lots of ventures <laughs> or, or adventures. <laughs> As we were saying yeah. offline. Well, welcome. Thank you for coming on air to with us today. Thanks for having me. I'm, yeah. I'm excited to be here. Well, I get the opportunity to work with you because um, you've recently joined the Guada board. I have. So thank you uh, for coming uh, coming onto our board and for your volunteer time. But before we get there, sure. um, I'd love to have you introduce yourself and t tell us a little bit about your background. Yeah. I'd love to do that. Um, so I, my name is Walter. Uh, I moved to the Wenatchee Valley full time a little over a year ago. Uh, I grew up in the Seattle area, um, have family all over Washington State, have an uncle that lives up Valley in Tenasket, um, and then the rest of my family is over, over in the Seattle area. Um, we moved here because my partner got a job at Confluence. Um, and we both have a great passion for the outdoors and love of the mountains, and so uh, the Wenatchee Valley was a great fit for us. Um, Which is a theme I keep hearing from our guests, right? It's this lifestyle, uh, the mountains, obviously we're just, we're so lucky to be in this environment. Absolutely. But you're able to do your work here, which is something we were talking about before we started the episode. Uh, you do most of your work remote and through Zoom conferencing and uh, tapping into all the technology here. So um, tell me how you've now built a career out in Wenatchee working remote. Yeah, so it, it's been great. It's actually, you know, I have a group of, of partners that I work with through Proda who uh, are largely remote, although Perry Ezevedo, who was on last week's episode, uh, lives here in the Valley, and so he and I can work together uh, in person. Um, and then we work with clients as Proda. We have, we have people that we work with who are all over the country. Um, but then also I work with some of the startups in the Valley, so I've been working with Pet Hub and Tom Arnold and Lauren Clemens. Um, and then some other uh, businesses in the Valley on, on growth and, and kind of the whole startup thing. And you've been a consultant for the last several years. Correct. Why have you made the transition to, to work with Proda Ventures um, kind of full time and narrowing your focus there? Sure. So, you know, one thing I'm really passionate about is entrepreneurship and biz building businesses. And so my work with Proda is really about, you know, building new things and and helping people succeed at you know at the startup the startup life, which is an incredibly challenging thing to do. And so, um, you know, I've been privileged to work in, in a bunch of different situations, but really my passion is around growth and and building new businesses. And so that's why I've I've chosen to work with Proto more full time. And we went into Proto Ventures a little bit last week with Perry when we we're on air. Can you kind of give it some context for us? Um, Proto Ventures is unique. You're mm -hmm. helping um, s scale, start, support, fund startups. Mm -hmm. um, but you've got one project that you guys have work been working on, um, Startup Rocket. Yeah. Um, so maybe walk us through an example. Tell us about Startup Rocket as kind of a context for what Proto Ventures does. Sure. So there's there's a couple of different parts of of Proto Ventures. One is uh, the part where we incubate businesses internally, and that's what Startup Rocket is. The other part is uh, where we actually work with other startups, you know, supporting them in their in their growth. Um, but Startup Rocket is really a product that came out of a need that we had as Proda for how do we think about building new businesses. And so Startup Rocket is a digital platform that helps founders go through the process of getting from an initial idea 
all the way through to building and building and scaling a business. Um, and so it's really, you know, it's a website that you can go to, www.startuprocket.com, um, and it has a framework uh, for how to, you know, ideate, validate, uh, test, and, and grow a venture, um, along with a bunch of supporting curriculum that helps kind of guide the user through that learning process and, and that doing process of actually building a new business. So Startup Rocket, you're helping take people through different steps. Why is why is building those those building blocks or those fundamentals so important in order early on for, for startups? Sure. So I, I think you know the genesis of Startup Rocket was really you know if you if you have an idea you can go on the internet and search for you know how to start a business and there are a, a million different resources out there. What we wanted to do was to provide a relatively prescriptive approach that was proven over decades of collective experience from, from ex experienced entrepreneurs on, on how to go through that process. And really what we found is that the, the initial steps are really important. So you know, the, the whole process, you know, really especially around va validation and testing early ideas and, and methods of testing with consumers to make sure that there actually is a true desire uh, for the product that you're building before you ever actually build that product. Um, and it really helps de-risk and also just increase the likelihood that you're going to be successful in what you're trying to do. Because there's a lot of cool company ideas, but not necessarily a marketplace where someone's going to want to buy that product or, exactly. or that service. Exactly. And uh, now, is there a specific industry that you guys are focused on at Proto Ventures in, in terms of the startups you're working with? No, I mean, so there's an underlying theme with what we're doing at, at, at Proto around the idea of human flourishing. And so a lot of the work that we try to do is in support of that. Um, but you know, the, the projects that we work on and the, the founder teams and the ventures that we work on kind of span everything from health to education to workforce development. Um, and then kind of everything in between. I, I love that. I don't think I've heard that tagline before, human flourishing. Yeah. And, and having, uh, does that come into sustain sustainability as Absolutely. well? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So yeah, we do work in the, in the energy space on clean energy and what a clean energy future could look like. Um, so it really touches all aspects of kind of human life and how do we make that better. Well, to transition a little bit then on human life and how we make that better, you're an active volunteer. I am. You just talked about you've been in town for two years. I think so, yeah. Two years. Yeah. Uh, you've now joined the Guada board. I have. Uh, you've been volunteering with a lot of organizations. Why has that been so important to you in, in coming to this community? Sure. So I think, you know, when, when we moved to the Valley, uh, one of the big changes for me personally was you know, leaving my former job where I was traveling a lot and having the opportunity to build a community and really be a participating member of the community. Uh, and one of the things that I've found as I've gotten to know people in the Valley is this, this whole idea of public service. And that's really important to me and to my partner. And so getting involved uh, in the community and, and giving back is, is a big part of what I enjoy doing. Um, and I just know that you know where I am in my life and my career, I've been privileged so far to have a lot of really incredible opportunities, and and want to share that experience with others. Um, well, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for going into that, and thank yeah. you for the work you're doing with uh, you know our organization. I love that uh, you've really had a strong intention moving in right away to get active and get yeah. involved, which is hard to do when you move to a new community it is. Um, and to to get a lay of the land. What is it about Guada specifically and some of the initiatives within the organization that you're excited about um, in the years ahead? Yeah, so I, I think there's a couple of things that Guada does that I'm really excited to support. Um, one is Flywheel, and obviously with my work with Proda, uh, super excited about supporting and building a community of entrepreneurship. entrepreneurship. Um, and so I think Flywheel is instrumental in catalyzing that in the Wenatchee Valley, and so I'm excited to help Flywheel grow. Um, the other part is is education and how do we instill this idea of entrepreneurship and creativity in the next generation. Um, and I think how do we equip them with the tools to take on the next generation's challenges uh, really around STEM and STEAM education. And so that's a big part of, you know, Guada's uh, programming and, and a lot of the work that Guada does that I'm excited to support as well. Well, I love that your particular passion for education uh, inside our initiatives because um, the companies we're all trying to build need talent. Exactly, exactly. And we need great talent homegrown so that we're not having, um, we have sustainability and can continue to have companies thrive. So yep. 
thank you for you know coming on board, adopting that mission, and. Yeah. Uh, we're going to interview another bottom board member today, Sherry Kuhn. She's on next. Um, so uh, before we go, where can people connect with you, Walter? Um, probably the rest. The best way to, to reach me is through LinkedIn. Okay. Um, you can find me directly on LinkedIn. You can go to the Proto Ventures website, and you'll be able to find a link to my LinkedIn profile there. Um, or you can find me through the through the Guada board. Through, so. through Guada board or an upcoming tech talk because you're usually yeah. there yep. connecting with entrepreneurs. Yep, absolutely. Awesome. Well, thanks for coming on air with me today. We do have to head out to a break, uh, but stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Guada TV. I get the pleasure of interviewing two guests on today's episode. Our second guest, Sherry Kuhn, owner of Traction Advantage. Yes. And also a Guada board member, which yes. we'll talk about a little bit later. Uh, we've got a theme today. Yes, board yes. Board members on air. Uh, but welcome. Thank you. Back to Guada TV. Yes. It was, this is easier. I was just telling Jenny, I think it's easier to be here. Last time I was in that. I think you, that's really the hot yeah, seat. Yeah, you, you filled in for me and you did a great job. So thank you. And now we get a chance to talk about you and... Yes. You know, uh, your business. My passion. Yeah. Yes. I, it, and um, <laughs> I, we're so excited for you at Guada because you've been the CEO of Orchard yep. Corset for the last several years um, and really built a path to entrepreneurship because yes. you want to support other people. Yes. So tell, me about, t t tell me about your journey. So, as you said, I was the CEO at Orchard Corset for a long time. and um, But when I came into Orchard Corset, it was a very different business than what people know it as now. It was a small and at the time struggling operation and um, when I got there Jeff Kirpus the owner my first real mentor so fabulous guy um, he, we realized that you know he was this classic visionary and visionaries are really great in spurts <laughs> and I was a classic integrator so when we came together we were able to really blow that business up and we really did blow it up you know we grew about a thousand percent in about um, two years so yeah. yeah you had to move facilities oh yeah we had to buy a new team. building we were growing out of everything right. and yeah we grew our team from five to 28 people it was just really crazy and that's really intoxicating and and fun but it's also terrifying and chaotic mm -hmm. and suddenly you're responsible for so many lives mm -hmm. and that we took that really seriously and neither of us really have a business background a teaching background so we started reading all the books every book by jim collins good to great great by choice um everything from pat lancioni some of you might be familiar with five dysfunctions of a team and it was all so great we're like yes this is all the stuff we need to do how, how do you do that nobody told you how they told you what they mm -hmm. told you why there was no how okay. so audible i'm a big audible person um said hey sherry have you ever heard about this book traction I'm like, well, no, I've never So it just kind of popped up in it your feed. It popped up as a recommendation okay. from Audible, an email. Okay. Yep. And I read the reviews. I thought, well, I've got a credit. What the heck? I'll load that in right. by chapter two. I absolutely knew. I always tell people, I'd be like, oh, the clouds parted and the sun <laughs> came down. Yeah. And it was this holy grail of how to run your business. It yeah. was the here's how you do all this stuff that you've been reading about. And I grabbed a book and I implemented it in our organization. And it was so fantastic that Jeff was really able to retire. And I have now been able to successfully transition out of a still thriving business to really get to do those two things, combining my passions of business and teaching and help other people do the same thing. So you read the book Traction. Yes. Really changed the business operations. Everything. Of course, it for the, obviously for the better yes. and, and brought a lot of stability to that organization. Yep. When was it that you made the move that you wanted to help other businesses for, as part of your career and your journey. Yeah, you know, because I would have never, the Sherry 1.0 five years ago would never have given up a Cush CEO job to go out on something that's an unknown. Um, Jeff really helped me with that quite a bit. I owe him a lot of credit for helping to push me out of my comfort zone that way. And I was helping people, um, you know, just ca everybody I could talk to, I might get this book, get this book, get this book. Every business owner I knew, you know, web guy, you know, everybody I knew, I was having them get this book and they were all finding the same thing. I didn't even know you could have it as a career. I didn't even know there was a website. I thought it was only a book. And it wasn't until I got a little further in that I realized, oh, there is a community of professional EOS implementers out there, very few out here in the Pacific Northwest, um, because Gina Wickman, the author and creator of this, is from Detroit. So it is spread from there. There's only still now about 350 of us worldwide um, that do this, and a bunch in Portland, one in Seattle, I met for all of everywhere. I'm the only woman in four states for any of you that 
So, um, yeah. So EOS, what does EOS so stand EOS for? So EOS stands for the Entrepreneurial Operating System. And it's just really a way of harmoniously integrating all the moving parts of your business, bringing it all together, helping you to run that better business, and really ultimately on the other side of that, you know, live a better life. And um, it's just simple, it's practical, it's real world stuff. Mm -hmm. There's nothing tricky, it's not fancy. It's, it, um, it takes all of that theory that we're also bad, you know, that we read about and pulls it into and distills it down to the simplest practices and tools that anybody can actually put into their business practice. Um, we like to tell people that we help businesses and business leaders get better at three things that we call vision, traction, healthy. Vision just means always beginning with the leadership team, getting everybody in your organization 100% on the same page about where you're going and how you plan to get there. It's amazing how there's usually too much vision in an organization. Not that mm, organizations really? lack vision, okay. but if I sit down with a five-person leadership team and I ask everybody, what's it look like 10 years from now, I'm going to get five very different answers. And you wonder, well, how are we getting anywhere? Everybody's rowing in a different direction and at a different speed. Uh, traction just helps to instill discipline and accountability so that you are executing on that vision at every level and everywhere you go in, in your organization. And then healthy, again, beginning with that leadership team, just means helping you to be a more open and honest, functioning, cohesive group of people who work well together. Leaders don't often work well together as a team. You get a lot of leaders, they got there because they've got strong personalities, and so there's a lot of politicking and siloing that sometimes happen, and so we, we work to abolish that in an organization. And when you get everybody rowing in the same direction, growing for the common good, it's amazing, amazing what you can accomplish in an organization. So your company, Traction Advantage, is going in and working with... A leadership team. A leadership Just team. the leadership team. Just the leadership mm -hmm. team on adopting in these three different areas. Right, on right. implementing right, okay. with the tools that we do. And it takes about two years on average, some a little less, some a little more, um, as we work kind of a work through the process. It's not a seminar, it's not a workshop, okay. right? I'm there as your driver of accountability and discipline in the beginning until we develop those new habits um, in your organization. We meet about five times a year for all day sessions is kind of how that works. Um, there's there's a lot more to that. I'm yeah. happy to have that conversation yeah, with anybody that wants it. But yeah. But and who are you working with? So it, it, you, you just recently made this move. And I I did made it full time. So yes. I've been doing it um, part time actually for the last two years. Yeah. Um, and then in June I made the leap and actually went to what we call boot camp to become a professional implementer. And then as of the end of December, um, I was officially I totally transitioned out of Orchard Corset. They're actually a client now. And um, so my, the typical, the sweet spot client for um, EOS is organizations uh, with 10 to 250 people uh, from about 2 million to 50 million um, in annual revenue. However, we have some as small as three people and only a half a million and some with as many as 7,000 employees and 3 billion in revenue. Um, so it's pretty business agnostic. It doesn't really matter what industry you're in. It's completely okay. irrelevant. Um, we even have nonprofits. My very first paid client actually was the Chamber of Commerce. So um, it doesn't matter what it is that you do. What's more important is that the leadership team and the ownership group are open-minded, right, and growth-oriented. That's really important. Um, it's also really important that you are willing in, to be open, honest, and vulnerable yeah, with your teammates, with yourselves, um, and that you're more afraid of the status quo than you are of change. You have to want help, and you have to want to be better. Otherwise, I can't do anything for you. Right, yeah. You're not coming in to do the work. No. You're just coming in to help facilitate. I facilitator, <laughs> teacher, and coach. That's okay. what I do. I, I'm not a consultant. I'm not going to tell okay. you where to put your ladder. You know how to run your business. And, and my, what I do only works if we, we have this disclaimer. It's like you have to be in the right market, delivering the right product or service into that market. If you're not, there's nothing I'm going to be able to do to help. What okay. I do is about execution. Okay. So you have to already have that business plan needs to be pretty solid. I'm just going to help you to run it way better. <laughs> <laughs> and with less stress and headache and more right. harmony, right. right? Less chaos. Well, I loved earlier we were, when we were saying that Walter, he talked about human flourishing. Yes. Which I loved that. That's a great term. Yeah, it's a great term, right? Human flourishing. Human flourishing. Work that in. <laughs> because that, when you're building business, that's what it's about. about yes. At the end of the day, it's about the people. Oh, I love it. Yeah. I love sitting in a room with leaders and we'll be working on something like their core focus or whatever and suddenly you can tell that they've all just landed on the right words, the right, you can almost see the light bulb. Yeah. Right? And it's really rewarding and joyful for me actually when they're struggling and they're getting and you know they're going to have that breakthrough at any moment and if you just sit back and just be quiet just long enough to let it happen 
and then boom, there it is. And and they did it, yeah. right? That's it's yeah, I love it. I do love what I do. I. <laughs> I, I can tell your passion shines through, and I know you said too that you know if people are watching sh the show today, yep. uh, to reach out and that you're Absolutely. available. Uh, Answer uh, questions, give you a free copy of the book, traction, you know, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. you also created an incredible calendar <laughs> to really help, mm -hmm. uh, really help people planner uh, to organize their life, building on these principles. It does enough, enough, so much on those principles. I had to make a few tweaks before EOS Worldwide would allow me to go to print. But yes, the perfect planner helps you to kind of EOS your life, yeah. as it were, right? So you've got some tools, even if someone's not going through the full system. Right, absolutely. Now to switch gears just slightly, yes. I just wanted to uh, briefly, before, uh, before we, you leave today, talk about Guada. You've recently transitioned from an advisor, which was kind of um, you know a strategic partner we tapped a couple times a year, and now you're full-time. So yes. what, and what are you- the executive board even. Yes. yes. So what, um, what are you excited about within Guada in, in the year or years ahead? Well, I have, you know, been a fan of Guada for really since you were just a little baby company a long, long time, or, or organization, yeah. you know, back in your infancy and um, as, as always being the fun nonprofit, right? Yeah. But as you just heard, my big passion really is business and entrepreneurs. And one of Guada's three legs is entrepreneurship, right? And I love working with people who are making a difference and trying to solve problems in the world. You know, I love tech and I think tech is great. And I also, uh, STEM, I was a teacher for a very long time. My daughter has a STEM degree from the University of Washington. I understand how important that is, but those aren't my passions, but I absolutely appreciate and understand how much they bring. But entrepreneurship is a huge passion for yeah. me. So if I can come in and in any way help benefit that or, or um, provide a bridge in there, you know, as an entrepreneur yeah. to other entrepreneurs. Well, we're so lucky to have you on the board. So thank you thank for your you service. For killing it. <laughs> Each and every we, week. We're, okay. We have a lot of fun at Guada. Yes. Like you said, that's what it's about. Yep. And um, we will have you back on air to uh, give us some updates here yep. awesome. uh, later on this year. Perfect. So I want to thank, thank you for you. joining us today on our episode. We're going to be right back after a commercial break to wrap up. I want to thank you for spending time with us today here on Guada TV and invite you to attend a Guada event in the near future. Guada hosts over 45 events per year. You can check out the details and information about those on our website. I want to thank our guests, Walter Thorne and Sherry Kuhn for coming on air with us today and encourage you to check out their organizations on their respective websites. We'll see you next week right here on the NCW Life Channel. Since 1999, Guada has served as North Central Washington's Tech Alliance. As a 501c3, our mission is to bring people and technology resources together to create a thriving community. Through our work, we aim to inspire, engage, and connect.